Okay, it's a while since I've done a video on auto digitizing. I just checked back through my old videos and it looks like it was back in 2010 when we were just transitioning from version 5 to version 6. We're now in version 8 and version 9 is just around the corner either later this year or early next year it will be available to the public so I thought it was about time that I revisited that subject and I've also aimed this video at beginners on um, in that I'm going to talk about the difference between raster and vector files and I'm going to show you how to load a graphic into the software so without further ado we will begin up in your embroidery canvas when you open the software there is a load image icon about the middle it's a little daisy and if you left click on that a dialogue will open where you can load an image now it will default to the Benina pictures from version 8 so version 8 does come with some images it comes with some JPEGs um, it comes with some photos that they've used in the photo stitch example it comes with some centerline pictures that you can use to practice your centerline tool in the auto digitizing and there's a section of Benina heart designs there too um, and if you keep scrolling down you will also come to some .wmf files and these are vector graphics unfortunately we can't get a preview or a thumbnail for those automatically um, I did try one bit of software to try and um, fix that issue but it, I had difficulty getting it to work so some of you may have may have done something to your computer to convert your vectors to thumbnails and if you did that's good if it's working for you other than that all you can do is load them in now the types of files you can load into your embroidery canvas are listed in the um, file types down here that you can choose from so you can narrow down what's in your dialogue to where you're searching with this button here so you can just look at bitmap files only you can just look at JPEG files only um, or PNG it will open WMF Windows Vector bit um, slash bitmap so WMF files will open here so that is one vector file that will open here the bitmaps JPEGs and PNGs are raster files EMF it will open which is a vector as well and EPS which are vector bitmap um, type files so mainly vector they've got slash bitmap here for some reason um, but those last three are usually vector formats um, so there are some vectors you can load directly into with this tool it will convert them to a bitmap so I'm guessing that's why they've got the slash bitmap here it will convert them to a bitmap if you load them with this tool you can navigate here to any other place on your computer now when version 8 first came out they talked about um, Corel connect to which was going to allow us to connect to Corel to get graphics vector graphics from Corel um, and that's probably more relevant when we get to Art Canvas because you did it through there but you Corel Connect is no not at this time working it's a Corel decision to not support that at this particular time but I do believe it is coming back when we get version 9 of the software we will also get access to Corel Connect again so uh, your your images are limited to what you got free in the software or what you can download from the internet now there's huge amounts of images available on the internet some of them you need to pay for some of them are copyright some of them are public domain public domain images you are free to use however you see fit um, sometimes they are unless they've got a, an attributes license which they require you to give credit if you're going to use them commercially um, 
but that's a good way of getting free resources. So my advice is to go searching for an image for what you want um, and I usually type in public domain vectors or public domain clip art to get my image. And then I have created a folder actually in my documents called clip art. So if I go to documents and to my clip art folder, then I've also created folders within that um, for um, different artwork. So I've got an animals folder, I've got an Art Nouveau folder, I've got a blackwork folder. I, basically every type of image that I want to group together, flowers for instance, I have grouped in a folder so that they're easier to find. And of course with Windows we can search in our search bar up here if we know the name of it or the subject, we might be able to find it that way. So um, I could have put this somewhere in my Benina um, menu but I didn't so it's here <laughs> so that's up to you how you organize that um, and then you can go in for instance animals once you've downloaded an image off the internet you can then select it here all these ones that have thumbnails are all raster files that means they're a bitmap a jpeg or a png and that means they're made up of pixels and i'll show you that shortly so um, you can select the image and i'm going to select the little duck and open it here and it will come on the screen now as I said, this is a raster file. I think it was a PNG. Um, and so if I zoom right in, I can see pixels. And, it, and in fact, in this yellow area, you can see that there's a number of different colored pixels making up that area. So uh, there is a way we deal with these so that the software sees it as one color. And I'll get onto that soon. So that's one way of bringing in an image. If you don't see the image when you um, select it and click open, that is probably because you haven't got your show bitmaps icon highlight, highlighted or your show vector um, highlighted. So these up here, if I turn off the bitmaps one, because this is a bitmap, if I click on that so it's not highlighted, I can't see my bitmap. But it's there, it hasn't gone, it's over here in the colour film showing there is a bitmap in this design. This is just a holding um, picture for when you're in colour blocks mode. Um, but if you see this little sailboat, that means there is a picture in, the, in this design, but it's just not showing. So you need to come up and click on either bitmaps or vectors to make it show. So if I click on the bitmap, it'll show. Now the colour film has to... Um, I have actually got another vector hiding in the background, so just ignore that. But um, the color film in has two modes, color block mode and, and individual object mode. So in individual object mode, the images show up as a thumbnail of the image. In color block mode, you will just get a sailboat image holder there. All right, let's, I'm not going to do anything else, anything with this little duck at the moment because I want to go through to Art Canvas and show you the difference of loading a graphic into Art Canvas. So we'll just select this little duck and delete him. And I do have a bitmap of a rabbit already loaded, so that's why that's showing now. Um, I also have a vector loaded, so I can click on that, and that is showing as well. Now the difference between these two is once they come through to embroidery canvas even though one of these was a vector if I go very close you might be able to see little tiny jagged edges they do get converted both of them to a raster file but you see this one that started off as a JPEG um, raster file it's got very big pixels and it's got lots of colors making up around this pink edge here I've got different shades of pink whereas this one that started off as a vector file if I zoom into that it's one color block one other thing you might want to notice if I go very close is there are slight gaps between the colors um, and this is usually caused by the w process in which the vector was made so you have no control over that that would be how the person created the vector in the first place. So some vectors will be better than others 
here's a really big gap down here oh it's not so big when you get in close but there are slight gaps some just the process they use to create their vectors some will be better than others in their end result okay so let's go through to I'll delete both of those actually so I can delete the bitmap here in embroidery canvas but I can't select a vector um, in embroidery canvas I can look at it or I can hide it but I can't actually remove it so I'm going to go back to art canvas or I haven't been there yet with you but we're going to go through to art canvas and there's my vector and I'm going to select him in there and delete him and I'm going to open both those images again because you didn't see that process so in art canvas the same little icon the little daisy is up here on the top left and you can click on that and you can navigate and I'm going to stay in this animal section that I navigated to and I've got the JPEG of the daisy here and I'm going to import that first so that's the raster file the JPEG and I'll enter you must press enter or it won't stay on the screen you can I'll just undo that when you load it import you can you have got this tool and you can actually size the graphic by drawing a bounding box and the graphic will fill that bounding box so um, rather you've got the two choices press enter and it will stay the same size as it was originally or create your bounding box and it will adjust its size to fit that okay now um, I think I will undo that and just load it at its normal size and enter and enter again to keep it at the normal size and now I'm going to um, load a vector copy of that same rabbit and I have got somewhere here pink rabbit SVG no that wasn't a very good one I thought I saved <laughs> a pink rabbit might be this one import enter yes I didn't give it a name so now I've got a vector and a raster they land on top of each other so I just drag this one across and if I zoom in here this one has absolutely no pixels no matter how closely I zoom whereas this one has the pixels so hopefully you have a good understanding of the difference between a JPEG and a raster file and how to load them into your software in the next video I will show you how to convert them into an embroidery